alaikum, everyone. My name is Lubna Mola, and I'm happy to welcome you to this session. It's a very important session, alhamdulillah. It's called Take Charge of Your Health and Soul the Quranic Way. This session will explore the Quranic guidance on how to heal our hearts and our health. I want to introduce to you our first speaker. She's Dr. Madiha Said. She is an MD, a practicing board certified family physician in Naperville, alhamdulillah, here in Chicago, and a traditionally published author of a best selling book, The Holistic RX your guide to healing chronic inflammation and disease. By the way, that book is being sold outside, alhamdulillah, in mass market. So please uh, go ahead and, and get that. It's a fantastic book. Uh, Madiha Saeed, MD, is a holistic mom MD on social media, is a director of education of Documenting Hope, and that's a national organization dedicated to heal chronic disease in children, and speaks internationally, igniting the world with uh, and speaks internationally, igniting the world with energy and passion to ignite a healing revolution. She has appeared in numerous prestigious holistic online summits, radio, newspaper, and even has been on international Emmy-winning medical talk shows. I wanted to take a moment just for a second to tell you of a miraculous story that last year, on this very same day, SubhanAllah, one year ago, I stood before you in a, in a talk and I was extremely sick, suffering from an ultra rare autoimmune disease. You couldn't tell very much from the outside that I was sick, but I was suffering. I was in a lot of pain and SubhanAllah, but I felt it was better for me to be here in the convention. I mentioned that, that I was sick as it related to my talk. The next day in Maghrib, after praying for al Maghrib, I said, Salaam Alaikum to the person on the right of me and one more person. That one more person grabbed onto my hand and guess who that was? Dr. Madiha Saeed. She said, oh my God, I was thinking the whole time in your session, I wanna meet you and tell you that you can be healed. And this is literally after three weeks of my dermatologist telling me, we don't know the, the, the cause of your disease and we don't have a cure. And she says, we know the cause of your disease and we have a cure. And by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that was a very fateful meeting for 10 minutes in the midst of a crowd. I got her book and within four months, I was completely healed from my disease. Well, alhamdulillah. So without further ado, I would like to welcome to the stage Dr. Madiha Saeed. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Rabbish Rahli Sadri wa Yasirli Amri. Wahlal Uhtatam Milisani Yafkahu Kauli. Seriously fatigued, depression, irritability, digestive complaints, lupus, Hashimoto's, chronic pain. I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. On top of that, I was a new resident, a new mom, a new wife, so basically <laughs> enslaved at every level. But all of my hopes and dreams of what I wanted to accomplish in life were now memories. And that I continued on that hamster wheel. And when I continued on that hamster wheel, just to survive residency, just as pretending like it was my new normal. That day, one day, my husband had a gut inclination. He's like, go check up on the 10-month-old child in daycare. I feel like something is wrong. And when I said, and that is when my hamster wheel that I was on immediately stopped. Because in front of me, my eyes, as I walked into that daycare, the, my eyes, what I saw was a nightmare. Because of the fact that as I walked in, just like they did in horror stories, the lights were dimmed. The daycare provider was sitting, rocking in her chair without a child going back and forth, back and forth. The, Deafening silence was broken by my baby's voices mm, 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 and crying in the back. As I run back there, I realized that this is my baby strapped down in a bouncer chair, arms and legs tied down with the receiving blanket. 
when they were st- and along with pacifier was in his mouth and then he was wrapped with a blanket so he was suffocating almost to death eyes bloodshot he was red faced i quickly released him picked him up and looked at her and she said i said what are you doing you could have killed my child and i ran out that day when i realized that allah had given me back my child given me back my gift from allah and that at that day i promised and i vowed that i will take care of this child the best that i knew how but this is crazy how can i take care of this child if i don't even know how to take care of myself i went to doctor to doctor to doctor trying even despite being a physician i went to doctor and i was sick and tired of the medicinal approach i was sick and tired of just being band-aided and just me looking at just compartmentalizing my symptoms but instead then alhamdulillah which is a big blessing i was diagnosed with lupus this is a disease that can kill you i looked at my doctor and i said what can i do what can i do at this moment to take charge of my own health so then this problem does not continue to get worse he said i'm sorry you're just going to let this disease take its course let this disease take its course I'm not going to sit back and relax and just let this disease take its course. So I vowed at that moment that I will try everything in my power to take care of this body the best that I know how and to figure out exactly what I can do to get back in charge of my own health. Did that story sound familiar, especially the chronic disease part? <laughs> Because this is what's really scary. 60% of all of Americans have at least one or more chronic health conditions and four and four out of 10 have at least two or more chronic health conditions and these con- the con- conditions are continuing to rise on a daily basis and what's worse it's not even just affecting us but it's affecting our children as one you know one out of every four children will have autism by 2033 if not that also by 2025 they're saying that 80% of our children will be sick 2033 one out of every four children will have autism where will islam go we need to get to the underlying root cause and stop this immediately shukr alhamdulillah shukr alhamdulillah shukr alhamdulillah on my mission i realized that it opened my doors to healing how because of the fact that no matter what you're dealing with even if you're dealing with arthritis if you're dealing with depression anxiety schizophrenia bipolar if you're dealing with autism if you're dealing with um skin disorders if you're dealing with um problems with your digestion no matter what you're dealing with the underlying root cause is due to inflammation and doctors know that because when you're giving we have allergies they give you an anti-inflammatory when you have eczema they give you an anti-inflammatory so the inflammation targeting the inflammation is the root and the purpose of uh, and how we can heal inshallah because lubna's story was not the first time i've seen that and in residency over and over and over i was stuck in a wall but then right after residency i joined this medical practice that i was the doctor of last resort these people have tried everything So alhamdulillah 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 all issues like autoimmune conditions skin disorders mood disorders digestive complaints pediatric issues all of them if you target the underlying root cause you can heal not one symptom but then all of them simultaneously subhanallah and what's really crazy is just by getting to the root cause because right now conventional medicine which is amazing right especially for acute conditions but when it comes to chronic condition each symptom that you are dealing with gets a different type of treatment but no one is looking at the underlying root cause because when you look at the underlying root cause you can heal not one symptom but then all of them simultaneously subhanallah so after years of trying to educate people and having an amazing success rate and um writing books and writing and researching spending years and years looking at the evidence based science i decided when i was educating muslim audiences that now i need to open the quran 
Because at that moment, my, my, it blew my mind, and I'm ready to blow yours too, inshallah. So be ready for this, woohoo! Because Allah has told us, in Surah Baqarah, ayah number 168, O oh mankind, eat of whatever is on the earth that is halal, lawful, and tayyib, good, pure, and do not follow footsteps of shaitan. Indeed, he is your clear enemy. So tayyib is pure, good, peaceful, tranquil, nutritious, safe, and it takes a completely different light in today's time because long time ago there was nothing artificial. And we really, to understand the context of this, in ayah number 166 and 167, Allah says, I'm going to summarize it, these people are standing next to the hellfire with hasarat, multiple regrets of following the social norm blindly. And then Allah could have said, in order to prevent that scene, you can go pray more. In order to prevent that scene, you can go do this more or do that more. But instead, what did Allah choose to say? Allah chose to say, the eat a witch that is halal and tayyib and do not follow footsteps of shaitan. That is what Allah chose to say because now science is proving why that is. And then later down again, Allah has said again that now he's talking to the believers. Before he was talking to all of mankind, now the believers, and this is he uses tayyib by itself, Oh, you who have believed, amanu, eat of the good things. And here Allah has defined tayyib for us. So there's no confusion. Eat of the good things that Allah has given you. And be grateful to Allah, because if it is indeed Him that you worship, subhanAllah, if it is indeed Him that you worship, that is so heavy. Because Allah, because tayyib comes together and alone, but it gets heavier when you dive in a little deeper, in Surah Taha, number 81, Allah says, Eat of the good things that I have provided you, otherwise my ghadab, and do not transgress those limits, otherwise my ghadab will be on top of you. And whoever my ghadab is on top, hawa will certainly fall. But then Allah says, I am a perpetual forgiver. SubhanAllah. But we have to understand this word and how it means in our context to truly understand this and take this to light. And that next ayah, inshallah, in Surah Al-A'raf 157, Allah has given us, it's so subhanAllah, Allah has given us the equation to success. Allah has told us that if you follow the Rasul and if you live tayyib and prohibit the bad, the impure, the khabith, that I will remove the shackles and then those people will be successful. SubhanAllah, SubhanAllah, SubhanAllah. And then this is just a quick reference. It's not just one place, two places, three places, it's over and over and over. If you are truly, if you eat up which is halal and tayyib, if you are truly successful, if you, and that is falah, that means from both worlds, here and thereafter, linking it to true faith. And then if you impure, you open, you have those chances to open yourself to shaitan. But so now it's time to get geeky. Now we're gonna get the science involved here. That's my specialty, inshallah, alhamdulillah, but we have control. And this is what I want to let you guys know. There's an entire science out there right now called epigenetics. And epigenetics is telling us that the, the, the genes may load the gun, but the environment is the one that pulls the trigger. So we, what we do every single solitary day, how we act, what we live and how we live, reflects on how our bodies will respond and what we are vulnerable to. And so the reason why chronic disease is on the rise is because we have disrupted Allah's balance. We have brought in junk that is no longer food anymore. That's not pure. That's not what Allah has provided. We're chronically stressed. And subhanAllah, 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 again, no matter what you're dealing with, digestion issues, psychiatric, deficits in any of those issues, Digestive health and detoxification and the four S's, stress, sleep, social, and spiritual health will help to, if you can put your body back into balance, by the way that Allah has told us and the Quran and Sunnah has told us, you can heal not one symptom, but then all of them simultaneously, inshallah. And Allah has told us, Prophet Muhammad has told us that Allah has created a cure for these diseases. SubhanAllah. So now how are we going to prophetic? So Alhamdulillah, these are all, what I'm going to tell you quickly is all evidence-based. I have been through years and years of study, and then when I put it together, what Allah has told, it continued to blow my mind, subhanAllah. Because this is how we are eating nowadays. And this is the reason we're getting sick, because these impure foods cause sickness and disease. But when Allah, when Allah tells us in the Quran, our perspective on food should be pure quality because it helps with the gut microbiome. And I'll talk about that. 
Small quantity because of the fact that it helps to balance your insulin levels and glucose levels and be prophetic, be nutrient dense. So have we ever thought about why Prophet Muhammad has told us the worst vessel you can fill is your stomach? Because of the fact that I know that your digestive system, we all know it as the poop maker. I know that makes everybody laugh every time we say it. But seriously, we, it's not just that part of it. It's basically so much more. 70 to 80% of our immune system lies in the gut. A hundred trillion bacteria lie in the gut lining that are responsible for digestion, immunity, energy metabolism, gene expression, mood and behavior. 90% of your serotonin, 50% of your dopamine is all made in the gut. So these bacteria are responsible for how you act and how you function. And normally they should be tight junctions. Normally in the cell lining they should be nice and tight when the balance of good bacteria versus bad bacteria is equal. But over time with artificial foods, with GMOs, with chronic stress, with problems with preservatives, with all this artificial, 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 it kills off these bad, good bacteria, gets replaced by bad bacteria that don't do their job well and let things through that should not be getting through. And when things get through that should not be getting through, it causes a fire because 70 to 80% of the immune system is like, hey, I'm gonna attack you. So it attacks it and leaves immune complexes all over the body. When it leaves immune complexes all over the body, you lead to diseases that affect the brain and the body. And subhanAllah, pure foods get your body functioning appropriately. You make healthy, you are healthy, happy. You make good decisions, you're less vulnerable to shaitan. But when you have artificial foods, fake foods, GMOs, your body is more prone to developing diseases, mood disorders, bad decisions, opening basically susceptible to the shaitan. Removing, so I have every one of my patients and every one of my children do this too. Mashallah, I have four children, 11 and under. Because if they can do it, we can do it. As I have them remove no artificial foods, no sugar, hydrogenated oils, even genetically modified, shaitan has told us that we're gonna change Allah's creations. And this is exactly what's going on, especially when the, the, the land is, when we mess with the land, it's nothing's gonna come besides for pain and agony. And on top of that, science is now proving that genetically modified foods can have a lot of problems. Like within us, cancers increase autoimmunity. Another big factor is your common food sensitivities. A lot of people are allergic to, or sensitive to, I should say, wheat and dairy. Wheat, because of the fact that it used to be 14 chromosomes, and now it's 44 chromosomes. Somebody by the name of Norman Borlaug genetically modified wheat so then everybody can eat it because that's what they eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So our bodies can't handle it. Bodies can't tolerate it. And so the same with dairy, it's been pasteurized and homogenized. It should equally separate, but it causes a lot of agitation and uh, causes a lot of inflammation. But this is what's really scary, that these foods are hiding everywhere. They're clearly against Quran and Sunnah, but they're hiding everywhere. Alhamdulillah, Allah honored me and blessed me to uh, complete Hajj this year. And so Alhamdulillah, in my Hajj time, it, during those t days of Hajj, I say it was a spiritual cleanse, but it was a physical intoxication because all we got to eat was impure foods, artificial foods. That was my, this is my minna tent over here, right? So this is my minna tent. Artificial, artificial, artificial. And not even on top of that, the quantity. We had buffets at Hajj, right? You have buffets, you're like, woohoo, I'm gonna do Hajj, I'm gonna eat, 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 eat. But now we're going to talk about why that's important because why does quantity matter and how does it because Allah has told us Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has told us that eat one third one third one third and the importance in the Quran and Sunnah is another oh my God subhanallah because the believer Sahih Buhari Hadith Allah uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has told us a believer eats with one intestine and a non-believer a kafir a disbeliever eats with seven intestines Before this I think I was eating with like 14 stomachs you know anybody else <laughs> Seriously Subhanallah this is so heavy and then Allah has given us exactly the 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 
the criteria of what those people that are the hellfire and those people just eat and eat and eat because they're susceptible to shaitan. And now science is proving that. That Why? Because of the fact that there's two hormones. The first one is called insulin. Insulin is your blood sugar regulator hormone. And then leptin is, helps you, tells you when you're full. So what happens, let's quickly talk about insulin. So carbohydrates, whenever you have a carbohydrate, it turns to glucose in the body. And the glucose, you need the cell, like the cell needs it for energy. But the glucose cannot enter the cell until some, a key is produced by the pancreas called insulin to go open the door of the cell and let the glucose in. Now this is gonna blow your mind. SubhanAllah, look at all of these foods over here. These are like corn flakes. It raises your blood sugar level higher than sugar does. So the things that we are feeding our families, all these processed, impure foods, are raising our blood sugar level higher. So when the glucose is always elevated, your insulin stops responding and therefore you have symptoms. So pure foods don't real, raise your blood sugar level that high, while pure foods, impure foods do, all these artificial foods. And because of this, our children are suffering. We are suffering. For me, six, probably 70% of the children that I see, 70, 80% of the children that I see are pre-diabetic. They're sick, waking around the midsection, sugar crashes, carb cravings, problems with the irritability, acne, irregular periods, agitation, the waking, you know, waking around the midsection, sugar crashes, carb cravings. So subhanAllah, subhanAllah, subhanAllah. And then on top of that, the long-term effects are plenty. And that's not it. Why can't we stop at one-third? We can't stop at one-third because of the fact that insulin resistance, the more that we gain weight, the more that we gain weight, the more leptin. We stop listening to leptin, which was what? Your hormone, like it is a hormone that tells you when you're full. So you don't know when you're full anymore. Did you guys ever think? <laughs> Why was the reason that they gave you bread when they bring to your restaurant? Because these processed foods will actually go and cause problems in the brain and you don't know when you're full. So you keep on eating and eating and eating and eating. So then we don't know when we're one third full. And subhanAllah, look at this. Look at the foods that actually increase your excessive eating. All these impure foods, all these artificial foods, all these foods with preservatives, all these foods that should not be called food, right? And because, so therefore, it actually comes out the same amount of price because of the fact that these pure foods you eat less of. And so therefore, here we spend a little bit more on food quality, less, less on food quality, but more on food quantity. Here, we spend a little bit more on food quality, but guess what? We spend less, we don't have to eat that much. It works in my house, I have to cook less. Yay, alhamdulillah! But subhanAllah, 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 these pure foods, you really follow the sunnah, just by eating pure foods. So whenever we need, we have to now stop living to eat. We have to now eat to live. That is it. Just the bare minimum, subhanAllah. Why? Because of the fact that we need to eat pure quality helps heal the gut. Small quantity balances the insulin levels. And then we have is prophetic foods. So focusing on fruits, vegetables, proteins, so many amazing things that Allah has given us, subhanAllah. But you know what? We quickly touched on food, right? I have more on my website. But it's not just food. It is also a tayyib lifestyle that we really need to concentrate to really help heal. And that is subhanAllah, subhanAllah, subhanAllah. Every single solitary one of my patients that I see, I immediately start them off with gratitude, sugar. The studies are, there's so many studies out there that it lowers inflammation. It actually turns your genes on and off. Did you know? Isn't that crazy? SubhanAllah. And what's so subhanAllah is Surah, Bakr, Surah Ibrahim, ayah number seven. Allah uses the strongest language in the Quran. He says, I swear to it, I swear to it, I swear to it. I promise I'm going to increase you if you are just a little grateful. SubhanAllah, SubhanAllah. So it's, it's, it's not me curing. It's Allah actually healing because he promises he's going to increase you. SubhanAllah. Then we have to keep love around you because love does heal. Keep those people around you that are going to lift you up, not drag you down. Sleep. While we sleep, we, don't, we, de we detoxify, so it lowers inflammation to optimize sleep. Stress management, 
if we truly have, we're mindful of our prayers. Right now the science is like overwhelming with mindfulness and yoga and all this, but guess what? We have this in our own religion. Subhanallah, subhanallah, subhanallah. We have this in our own religion because if we truly had mindfulness of our prayers, if we really knew we were sitting and talking to Allah and not just using it as like an act, we would develop hushu in prayer and really it would make our lives so much better. Because 80% of the complaints that come to primary care physicians are due to stress. Then we have is there's so many toxins in our environment. Our bodies, our children are not meant to tolerate all these toxins. So that's another piece of the puzzle. So your digestive health and detoxification, the 4S stress, sleep, social and spiritual health, if you can help heal this, you can improve not just one condition, but then all of them simultaneously. And I know this is a lot to take in. Because I, I told you I was going to blow your mind, so I probably did, alhamdulillah. But I need to help you to take one step. I am here for you. I live this lifestyle. My children live this lifestyle. My family lives this lifestyle. I can do this with you. It's not very difficult. But take that one step. Take one step towards Allah and then He will run towards you. And we got to first start reading labels. Anything gelatin, and just like we're teaching our kids to remove gelatin, we got to tell them to show um, the no GMO. My 10-year-old, my 11-year-old now, alhamdulillah, he will not touch anything that has GMO or artificial. He goes, no, mama, that's not tayyab. That's not tayyab. I can't eat that. Allah said no. He will literally throw ice cream away in front of people because he said, no, mama, I'm not, if I'm not going to eat it myself, I'm not going to give it to somebody else. Because it's harmful for me, it's going to be harmful for somebody else. Make easy swaps and focus on the pure things that Allah has provided. And just make easy substitutions. You know, if you have white bread, you go to like Ezekiel bread or almond flour. I cook all my stuff with almond flour. There's coconut flour, cassava flour. Then there's, if you do chips, there's healthier chips. Sugar, evil sugar is poison, pure poison. There's he healthier honey. Oh my gosh, the benefits of honey are like, ooh, subhanAllah. Subhanallah, I make brownies. Like these are my brownies that I made with just honey and almond flour. These are my cakes. You can substitute, just substitute. It's so easy. So we have to just like tayyib. Because Allah has told us in Surah Maida, I number 100, that the good and the bad, the pure and the impure are, going, are not equal. Even though the impure is going to be such an abundance that it's going to be tempting to you, but only those with understanding will succeed. So my job today, that I think Allah has brought me to today, and with amazing mentors that I have, is to educate you, to inform you that the choice is yours. We can turn those genes on and off. We can turn those genes on and off. So getting back to the Quran for optimal health and well-being. Focus on the quality and the quantity. Increase your vegetables, protein, and healthy fats, fruit. Intermittent fasting, limiting toxins in our environment, stress management, as it leads to 80% of the complaints that come to primary care physicians. Sleep, positive friends and family, gratitude. Every morning when you get up, say 10 things that you're thankful for. It's the most powerful thing you can do starting today. Just be thankful. Because I know we are supposed to be with people, alhamdulillah, but we have to consciously do it because of our surrounding environments. So, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. And I am here for you. I have written a book that was, alhamdulillah, that can help you. On my website, I actually have this entire healing bundle that I've created. It has 25 of my recipes. It tells you exactly what a healing day looks like. It tells you everything that you need, alhamdulillah. So you can, I, you'll be getting one of these at my booth outside at the mass, um, mass market. I have my book there. But also, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, come talk to me. My job right now is to help you in any way possible. I am here for you, inshallah. So you take the first step. Because think about this. Think about everything the Muslim ummah or you have been able to accomplish when we are feeling less than 100%. It gives me goosebumps because I can't even imagine what we will actually be and who we were in the Muslim ummah will go when we are feeling our very best. So take control of your health and future now. Our children are in imana on us. Our bodies are in imana on us. We have control. Allah has told us he's given us everything in the Quran. Subhanallah, that is truly our light for our souls and our hearts and our health. 
and I am here for you. Take that first step now. I've tried to make it as easy as possible so I can help you get back in charge of your own health the Quranic way by bringing the focus back to Tayyib. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.